TNTM The Show presents... Talk Nerdy to Me Secret Invasion with your hosts, Pablo Gunner and... Slay J. What we're going to essentially do is just give our review of the complete uh, season one of Secret Invasion. We're just going to discuss kind of maybe not episode by episode, but kind of just how we felt about the Secret Invasion series on Disney+. Plus. What were your thoughts? So it was six episodes, right? Yes. I watched it week by week. You watched the whole thing once it was completely out, right? Right. Well, so Hulu has, if you have Hulu, until the 18th of August, they are giving the first three episodes on Hulu. Let's just say you don't have Disney+. Plus. You can start it off on Hulu, and then uh, the next day I kind of finished on, on Disney+. Plus. That's what kind of made me get Disney+, Plus to finish it out. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. cool. Each episode was intense in my in my opinion i know a lot of uh, people hated on this series which i didn't understand i don't know if they didn't read the secret invasion back in the day and they didn't have that type of hype or are they too critical of it because it's not like the graphic series i i think that's mainly it is it's not the com it's not the comics event yes. that it was I think that's everyone's complaint when it comes to anything like this. This is different because it's a show. It's like Civil War, right? Where Civil War, at least it was this big movie, but it was a Captain America movie, but it wasn't a full Captain America movie. It was like Avengers Light. So it wasn't like full-blown Captain America, but it wasn't like full-blown Avengers either. And it felt like it should have been an Avengers movie because it's Civil War and they should have included all these other people, but they didn't. And there are certain things I can understand about that because they're not in the universe. But yet then there's characters that they, I feel like they should have had in that, like Goliath. Yes. He was introduced in the Ant-Man movie and then there was even a competition between him and Ant-Man. To, so to have him in there as well show up and then they could have killed him off or they could have just messed him up. He could have gotten hurt or something happened wrong. So that there was some level similar to the comics event. Agreed. This was minimized even more. It was spoiled for me in a sense because I watched something that said, this isn't the comic book series event. Well, I'm already disappointed. But I also went in going, this isn't going to be that. Because they said that. Because I watched that thing. And that's the thing that everybody... You can go, oh, I may not like this thing because I watched this video. Or I maybe I appreciate it. It changes your view, right? Like, any new information changes your view. And so, like, that's why, like, some people hated Mandalorian Season 3. And they're like, yeah, well, they said that it was going to be better than Season 2. And it's like... Well, they're trying to hype it for one. That's kind of like their job, you know? And then when you're the creator or something, you're going to hype stuff anyways because you are passionate about it and that's how you feel. You know, I'll be like, the stuff I write, I'm like, dude, this is gold. And then everyone else will read it and be like, this is garbage. You should never put this out. You should never see the light of day. Me going in, I knew that. So any element that they did bring in, I was like, you know, like, this is good stuff, right? Like, it was smaller and it was like, hey, this is just Nick Fury... His little mini event series, you know, and it's not really anything to do with Secret Invasion, but it does have to do with scrolls. So it does have to do with that idea of who can you trust? Who is a scroll? Who's not a scroll, mm -hmm. right? Like with that first episode, who they killed off at the end, I was like, is that going to be a scroll? Yeah. And it wasn't. <laughs> it they was... stuck to their guns the whole way through. I was surprised. I was a little disappointed there wasn't other people that were, like, not scrolls. You know, like, yes. I was kind of expecting, like, maybe Hawkeye, maybe Quicksilver. You know, I, I, I wanted Quicksilver to be mm. a scroll. The revelations were good, and to me, it, it makes sense with where they're taking it. Exactly. I felt like that this series was kind of just like a setup, and it, like you said, kind of like a mini event for Fury. I know in one of your videos you mentioned that they keep calling it the blip, <laughs> and I hate that too. I don't know where this came from. It came from Spider-Man or something? Yes. Like, yeah. It, it, yeah. They should have just called it something else, uh, but they kept... Oh, you haven't been the same since the blip. And they said that every episode, and I was just, I was just getting annoyed, <laughs> annoyed with it. Which is funny, because yeah. in the last episode, he says, like, when I got dusted, and I was like, that sounds so, so much better, and so much cooler, yeah. and just smoother. And I was like, can we just call it, like, the dusting? Or yeah. It just felt so much better. But, And that's the thing is, I've talked to other people, I've talked to people, and they're like, yeah, the first episode was okay. And I was like, that's just, like, they're just establishing. Yes. like. They step up with every... Uh, to it's me, this, like, yeah. it steps up every single episode so that by the time you get to six, you're like, 
oh my god, this is so intense. Like, it's crazy. And I think everyone needs to realize every first episode of something that's happening, like a, a mini event, mini series or whatever, is all set up. Right. And then, of course, you know, it's cool because there was a lot of action in the first part of the episode. You get to more of the meat and potatoes in the middle with kind of like the story, what's going on, where... Where's Nicholas Fury and all of this? What's going on? He's finding out that there's a million scrolls out in the world that are secretly living because he blipped and then when he came back he didn't go to to be with the scrolls again to help them out. He kind of just stayed with his missions with Miss Marvel. I think they're trying to show us. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just it's intense, but at the same time it's it's very entertaining. Even my girlfriend who has no doesn't even care about the MCU was watching this show with me, which was just, it's its surprising when that stuff happens. I think overall they did a great job of just establishing story, plus it's Samuel L. Jackson, like, it's, it's hard for him to not kill, I mean, you know, kill it, you know what I mean? He's, he's fantastic as Nick, Nick, Nicholas Fury ever since Iron Man 1. Mm -hmm. He's just knocked this role out of the park, and uh, it's fantastic in my opinion. Yeah, it was it was really great. Like that second episode was so good, and like I said, it just builds and builds and builds. That other lady, who's that that she runs that spy organization? Like, oh yeah, the British lady, right? Yeah, yeah, she was really good too. Like when she's interrogating, she is quippy too. I like yes. that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. It was really weird though. Like at first, that first episode was weird, but they explain it, and then he seems to be getting more to himself as he. As the show goes on, but it all he also changes and grows, which was really cool to see. Like, this is a Nick Fury that's like changing and learning and and mm -hmm. tr like it's small ways, but it's still like huge ways because it's Nick Fury, right? We just know Nick Fury as like this gruff, like I'm never gonna change. I'm stuck to my ways, and this dude's like he's trying to change at least in small ways. I can I rewatched the second episode. Oh my gosh, that that's that scene where he's talking to Talos in the in the train. Mm -hmm. So good. The acting is so good. The way Talos reacts, because he has no lines pretty much. It's almost like a monologue yes. for Nick Fury, for Samuel Jackson. And he's just reacting. His reactions are so good. Rewatching it, I go like the acting in this is top notch. And even like Don Cheadle, I love that like the scroll was doing like their version of what they think Rhodey would be. Like it was it was yeah. elevated, but it was still, you know, like you could tell it wasn't him, but it because it was slightly elevated. It was more of like a hardcore military version of I know Rhodey's he's military minded, but I feel like he was just a little over the top. Stepped up military. Yeah. Guy, now he's the right hand man to the the president of the United States, and so I, maybe that's probably why they kind of stepped up that whole militaristic side uh, to it. When you find out he's a scroll, you're like, okay, that you know this is kind of following some and stuff in the the comics and whatnot. So it, it's it, it's great uh, to see even the relationship with uh, Nick Fury and his wife. Yeah, that whole thing that was a good. It's a good, uh, you know, uh, storyboard type, uh, character arc type uh, situation where you're like, um, not necessarily needed in it, but I think it shows you where the progression of where Nick Fury was and how he ended this series at with, with you know, just having his wife kind of be that iron that sharpens him, you know? Right, I, I love that, yes. Yeah. So, I think it was at the end of the second episode... He shows up at his house, and even that, like, oh, he has a home, and he has a wife? Like, yeah. <laughs> so it was like, it was like a triple thing. It was like, yeah. oh, he has a home, he has a wife, his wife is a scroll, and you go, does he know, did he know his wife was a scroll the whole time? That's the way they leave you at the second thing, and then you're like, oh, gosh, what's going on? Is this gonna, is this gonna start something? Right. But then you kind of find out that he knew. He knew, and, yeah. and that was... That was interesting too, like, I don't know how long he knew, because I don't know if it was like me and my wife were like, I didn't tell, I, sh I didn't really show my nerdy side until she fell in love with me, and then it was too late for her. And that was a similar situation for her, like, she got she got him to fall in love with her, but she, and then she was like, oh, by the way, I'm a scroll. But, like, the, she was giving the hints, when even in that 
flashback scene that they had, right, with what she was saying. And that was really cool. I love, too, because she gets the order to kill him. You don't know if she's going to do it because she even said, like, oh, I've been getting back to who I was before you. So you're like, oh, what does that mean? That was crazy to think about. And you're like, is she going to kill him? And it was so great how it's so intense and it builds and it builds and they're sitting at the table and they're and they shoot at each other. Or they both have their guns out and they shoot. And they both purposely miss. This is why I love, like, watching stuff with my wife. And I turn to her and I was like, isn't that what love really is? Isn't that what marriage is? Like, yeah. <laughs> being with someone and then purposely not killing them. Like, doing your best to not kill each other. You know what I mean? Like, that's what marriage is. Yeah, like you said, it's a good, it's a good metaphor for it. It shows, like, how much he cares for her and she cares for him. And even as that goes on, because you go like, okay, that's the end of that. But, you know, he even calls her up later. And even in that conversation, he's like, well, I've dialed your number millions of times, but I've never actually hit the send hit the button, button, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We haven't really talked about which is Gaia, which is the daughter of Talos. That whole thing, because that was a crazy scene, too. Like, she gets killed off. Mm-hmm. And I was like... Yeah, what's going to happen? Oh, okay. Yeah. The thing is, what I know about scrolls is because of their ability to shapeshift, they can, like, move their organs within their body, right? So, like, if you change into another thing, you would change to that. Like, if you change to a Time Lord, I guess you would have two hearts. I don't know. But, of course, that's crossing the streams. But, you know what I mean? Like, they change their body based on that. So, like, if they shoot at you, you could, like, move your heart where your heart... But I feel like they're... Because even in, like, in certain fights, it seemed like you could go for the head or you could go for, like, their stomach. And that was their, like, I don't know if their hearts are in their stomach or something, but it seemed like that, right? Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't I didn't realize that until you said that. And I, it was really cool, too, that, like, when they're really hurt, that then they start changing back. Back, back to the scroll, yeah. Oh, uh, and that fight, too, where he gets Talos' help. That was so intense, dude. Like, when there's that whole fight, like, the Russians and the scrolls and the president and the... And the American. Oh, it was oh just, you mean like with the convoy? The whole shootout, the, the convoy. Yeah, that, yeah, yes, that was, that was really cool. Like with the the helicopter. Was it a helicopter or a plane or something? Yeah, the helicopter. And um, you know, just having to to save the president's life. Not only that, and kind of look out for each other. Uh, spoiler alert: uh, Talos does get into some trouble there, and <laughs> I and you know, I didn't think they would stick with that I, either. I, didn't think so. I thought they were gonna keep him somehow yeah. and i was like oh man like that's that's nuts and then just like seeing how it continues with gaia and everything like that the we interrogation do. scene was so good we do get introduced to how they kind of keep the people from society so they turn into those people those people are like in pods underground in this uh scroll compound right mm -hmm. what is it scrollylos scrollylos new scrollos new scrollos there you go <laughs> also, we're introduced to some kind of like super scroll action. I, so, it, it's... <laughs> I can understand how people can be bugged by this because I was irked at least to be like, the super scroll is the Fantastic Four villain and he gets the powers of, he he has all the powers of the Fantastic Four and that's why like he's a great Fantastic Four villain because he has all their powers. But then that also goes to show like the strength of the Fantastic Four because they always beat him even though they he has all their powers because like their family and you know there's four of them so it kind of bugged me like that wasn't the thing you know yeah. it would have been really cool to be like just make it like oh we don't know who these pa who these people are what these powers are and what they're from but he has even the ones they mentioned they're like random and I was like why well, I don't like Groot and like all these other ones and then and then even what they did with, like, the finale, like, that was pretty crazy what they did. And there's, like, I was like, I guess there's, like, two Super Scrolls now, kind of, but not really, you know, because once again, like, now you can't have that person. I mean, I guess maybe you could recreate the experiment so that you could recreate Super Scroll that's the Super Scroll of Fantastic Four. So, but now they have, like, a Super Scroll that is has like a crap ton of powers of supers from the MCU. I, I like it was a list, right? Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't just 
I don't think it was just the main Avengers. Like a whole list of them, and I was like, yeah. that's crazy to me. But at the end, like, even that one, I go, your greatest abilities were that of Captain Marvel. I've seen things online, and they're like, oh, you just created the most powerful being in the MCU. And I'm like, no, because the, the highest you can go, apparently, is, like, Captain Marvel. So, yeah. yeah, you have all these other abilities, but you're also, you can't go higher than Captain Marvel. Like, that's the most powerful you can go. So, if she wants to compete with Captain Marvel, she'd have to use Captain Marvel's powers. She's not... I mean, yeah, she could use other powers to fight her as well, but they're not going to be as strong as her own powers. Yeah. That doesn't entirely make sense to me, like, people saying that. I, I really think this perfectly sets up Armor Wars. Because as a scroll, because you go like, okay, Rhodey could give away that tech to other people as a scroll, right? Like, the Iron Man tech having that connection and everything. He, I'm sure he's the one that took over as, like, Iron Man control of that or connection so now him going now i'm back and now i have to clean up this mess that scroll me created so speaking of roadie i read on something on comicbook.com where they're stating that ever since you know when he fell from the sky i think it was in civil war that he's been a scroll since then right like they switched him in the hospital or something like yeah. that right i saw mm -hmm. something too that like his his rehabilitation like all that was not him I say, like, everything after Civil War. Like, I get that. In the sixth episode, we kind of find Rhodey. The real Rhodey in there. So, it's it's gonna it's gonna be exciting to see what they do next. I overall really enjoyed the series. I was really impressed with the acting overall. I'm interested to see how things go forward, especially with Gaia being, like, this new Super Scroll and how that's gonna work into the whole MCU, and especially in this... And that other woman, I don't know. Oh, but, the British lady, right? Yeah. The spy. Yeah, and they, then, they're going to be working together, I'm guessing. Right, yeah, they're going to yeah. be working together. This seems to roll directly into the Marvels. Yes. So, because even I've seen in the Marvels, oh yeah, they're going after all the places that we call home and love. So I go like, okay, so that could include places where there's scrolls, you know, and that can... Obviously, it's going to include Earth. That's going to be a very interesting thing right there. Yeah, overall, like like you're saying, it's it's fantastic. You do get that girlfriend experience, which I wasn't expecting, because it's kind of hard to get her to watch some of the things with me. When I was able to, and she liked it, it was it's nice. Now I could start showing her some other Marvel stuff. <laughs> yeah. Getting, getting into that. The fantastic acting. I think, you know, Samuel Jackson knocks it out of the park. I really enjoyed his wife in the in that uh, show oh, I thought yeah. she, she was really good she was kind of sarcastic and snippy but also at the same time you could tell that she loved him there was some good chemistry between those two actors even the Grava guy I think I thought he was cool but you know kind of they kind of rushed him a little bit but I, I think he was it was cool and then this whole idea of the whole the Russians attacking the United States and all that I thought that was that's a cool concept kind of Tying it into to, to what's happening today, right? And so that kind of that kind of hit home, but it's also at the same time they're using current events along with this made up storyline, which I think just it helped you escape for six episodes and then uh, it's definite <laughs> buy. Escape to reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the villain was pretty good. I thought that guy knocked it out of the park. I thought he did a superb job too. He said that he really wanted to make it so that this was not, this was a really hated character. And especially when he started taking out his own people and he was willing to sacrifice his own people just to further his agenda. His hate really more than anything else to just fuel his hate. But it, it almost made you feel for him too at the end where he was like, you kind of created me into this person because like I started as a kid killing people and just, and it just furthered and I became... I lost myself more and more I killed. And it was weird because it's like it wasn't Nick Fury, but it was. It was actually Gaia, you know, but then to her get that revelation and everything like that, that was that was interesting to see and that was really cool. It was really solid. I'm interested to see what they do going forward because to me it makes sense to go, hey, this is why Armor Wars is going to happen. This is, this is going to play into the Marvels. I just thought there was going to be more revelations of like who was a scroll, like bigger, like characters that they couldn't replicate. They couldn't. They don't have to replicate powers like Hawkeye. Maybe not that I wanted Hawkeye to be a scroll. I'm just using that as an example. But yeah, my wife has been enjoying it. Has been enjoying it too. But she's been with me for a long time, so she's a, she gets it at this point too. So, but it is. There are certain Marvel things where she's like, I'm out. 
I'm done, you know, and I care because I go like, yeah, but I've seen this in the comics and I'm going to stick with it, you know, and she's like, I'm out. This is not one of those. I still need to watch it with her because she had to go to sleep early last night so that, because she had work. So I was like, I got to watch this. You know, we have a podcast now. <laughs> I guess awesome. just just some minor complaints was with Talos, they kind of, I mean, just with the whole situation with the schools where they kind of like, let's preserve our own people. You know what I mean? I guess the gripe's not with Talos, but it's with the Gravik guy, which kind of f falls into his whole villain arc of him taking out his people. But it seemed just a little bit rushed in that sense, because you didn't, you didn't. Maybe it's maybe it's just the whole villain aspect of it. But maybe I, I was kind of just waiting for kind of the brevity, the emotion of just him even doing that, and it kind of got kind of just. I felt like just rush a little, but. Other, th other than that, that's something I can look past, and um, like I said, it's 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 been solid and great. I re definitely recommend it. You know, stream it. I don't know what we our rating system is now, but it's always been buy, rent, or pass. But this is definitely like a must see. Yeah, this is definitely a buy in our. It's definitely worth getting because I know a lot of people do that with Disney Plus, where they're like, "No, I'm not doing that." And it's like, get it just for this, and then you can quit it. Just hit it and quit it. But they did do the the funeral and stuff with Talos. Oh, yes, Talos. with Talos, yes. So you did feel the the weight of his death. Like, in multiple ways, I feel like. Mm -hmm. From from Nick Fury as well. Even though he's like, I gotta just keep on going. Gaia was like, I'm gonna bury him. And then I think she even did it with, with Nick Fury's wife. wife yeah, because so she didn't know the prayer. Right, right the prayer. Yeah, yeah. And see, once again, dude, that hit hard for me. As a person who is Hispanic and I'm not fluent in Spanish, my parents didn't teach me Spanish because they didn't want to be, they didn't want me to be prosecuted the way they were prosecuted being brought up. So I felt that that way. And so that was powerful to me right there in multiple ways. You can see these different, you know, traditions. And then I have a question though. Do you think you could be with a scroll? I don't know, man. That, that, that came up in the series, you know, kind of just like, well, did you love me or did you love my face? Pretty much the, what was her name? Priscilla? Priscilla was yeah. the name of the person, but I think her name was like Veronica or something like that yeah. as the, as the scroll, the scroll. So like the person that was dying in the hospital, the lady and she took over, she has permission. I thought that was cool. Little, that was a beautiful, that was a cool thing. little backstory yes. for that. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's kind of hard. You know, you kind of see Nick Fury at the end making out with the scroll so it's kind of it's kind of i don't i don't know i mean you know wait till you see him naked i guess <laughs> i just but even that was a good part to see what like i said he's growing and to be like yeah nick fury's you know do it he's putting in that work to make those connections yeah. you know with other species and stuff and i was like i don't know man they're kind of rough to look at but like you said i mean maybe under the under the clothes, you know, <laughs> I mean, different they can transform too. So like, it's kind of like being with yeah. Mystique, you know, oh, you're yeah. like, but it's also kind of messed up too. Cause you're yeah. like, I want you to transform. And you're like, oh, so you don't really, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what kind of stuff, but I, me just being like a Mass Effect nerd, I'm, I'm saying I'm going for it. Yeah. Cause of uh, what's, uh, Taylor? Liara. Liara. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Liara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do have Liara vibes though, for sure. Oh, yeah. For, yeah, they do. Yeah, like, the way yeah. their heads and stuff yeah. are. Yeah. Definitely worth seeing. Definitely worth checking out. I don't know if you can just watch it on its own, but maybe because it's, like, really just like a spy thriller. Totally. I think it does have that entertainment value. It gives enough just mm -hmm. from the, the, like, snippets from Captain Marvel that you don't really have to watch that movie. But if you've seen it, like, okay. I guess there are some references, like the blip and stuff that you kind of have to know. Not that too deeply. Of, yeah, I think they yeah. cover it enough. Yeah. But I think most of America's seen Endgame and the, what was the other one before that? Oh, Infinity War. They've seen both of those. Might just be like an easy transition to just watch this. But I think it has its own entertainment value. But I, th I feel like we're getting off the little rails there at the end here. So if you can just tell, we're wearing our uh, Talk Nerdy to Me. Talk Nerdy to Me Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles merch. Here, yes. And got, I got the jersey for Donatello here, my custom number. Check out our website. It is tntmtheshow.com. There's a section that says the store. Go into there, check out all of our designs. When it comes to the jerseys, I don't know if you're a sports guy like me, we do have an option where you can customize your number 
and your name on your back. Pablo's got the tank top here for Leonardo. Also, if you could see this here, we have our Pokemon hat. Just wanted to give you guys a preview of what this stuff looks like. It's pretty cheap. Like, not cheaply made. Like, that's high quality. I was impressed with how high quality that I, was. I was too. Even this, this is... shirt. Like, this shirt is pretty high quality as well. Everything that we've gotten from them, it's been... Pretty top notch. It's been top notch. At first, you kind of worry. We're spending this money to kind of invest into what we're doing here. But everything, all the products have been just knocked out of the park. Yeah, so. like 99%, I would say, have been. And we're not biased, because seriously, we wouldn't put this stuff up for sale. Our prices aren't ridiculous. We really try to... Make uh, it as cheap as possible. Yeah. Because I don't like spending more than... I will not spend 30 bucks on a shirt. I'm not making our shirts 30 bucks. Like, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I won't buy a shirt that much. So, and especially us uh, starting off new you know, introduction price. We're not licensed. We don't have any licenses with any other or partnerships with any other companies. We're just doing stuff that is copyright free, license free, royalty free stuff right now. This is our little motto and stuff yeah. has been. We've been doing this for like 12 years. 12 so. years now, yes. You, you can find us on social media. Hit up our Twitter. It's at TNTM The Show. Also our Instagram. Uh, we're currently working with Facebook to get our Facebook page back. Stay off that page for now. Check us out everywhere else. We have stuff. I'm at Pablo Gunner, so I'm doing reviews and stuff. I try to do and uh, that stuff on a weekly basis, at least. Yeah, and if, if you're wanting more in-depth episode-to-episode kind of like breakdown, follow Pablo Gunner on TikTok. He, uh, he does each episode one by one breaking it down more kind of we just gave a general opinion and talked about what we liked but uh check us out on there so uh, continue to keep trucking <laughs> talk nerdy to me talk nerdy to me